Hello, options traders, and welcome to a mini trading tutorial from OptionsAtoZ.com, teaching the art and science of options trading. Well, it's been a while, so I wanted to post a video on a commonly asked question. At what point does my options time decay begin to accelerate more than average? Now, if you ask most traders, they'll tell you it's the 30-day mark that is most critical, and that's where you have to be careful because that's when the options price begins to accelerate its rate of losses. While it is true that you'll experience much more rapid time decay within this 30-day window, that's not where time decay begins to accelerate. And the correct answer may surprise you. The point where it accelerates isn't even a fixed point in time. It's relative. To see why, let's start by looking at an options price over time. Here we have an at-the-money 100-day option priced at $10. The options price is here on the vertical axis, and the amount of time remaining is on the horizontal axis. Notice that I've drawn it with the amount of time remaining, since that's the number that an option pricing model needs to figure out the options price. And you'll see that come into play in just a bit. So to read the graph, for example, when 100 days remains, the option is worth the full $10. When none of the time remains, the option is worth zero down here. This graph, of course, assumes that all other factors, such as the stock's price, interest rates, and volatility, remain constant. So in the real world, this is how an at-the-money options price would decay over time. However, many new traders think option prices decay in a straight line like this. In other words, they think that when 25% of the time has passed, 25% of the options price has eroded. Or when half the time has passed, half the options price has eroded. This would be called a linear relationship, which just means that the options price decays in a consistent straight line over time. But again, this is not how option prices decay in the real world. Instead, the price decays slowly at first, but then accelerates closer to expiration. That's because options are priced according to volatility, which is proportional to the square root of time. How does that work? Well, it's easy to figure out. Always ask the question, what percent of the time remains? And we put that in a decimal form, take the square root of that number, and that shows how much of the options price remains in a percentage form. So for example, what happens to the options price when 75% of the time remains? Take the square root of 0.75, and you'll get an answer of about 0.87. That means when 75% of the time remains, the option will retain 87% of its value, which is to say that it's lost 13% of its value. And you can see here on the graph, that's exactly where it lines up. When 75% of the time remains, the option is priced here at 87% of its initial $10 value, or about $8.70. Let's try another one. What happens to the option's price when 50% of the time remains? Take the square root of 0.5, and you'll get 0.71. That means when 50% of the time remains, the option will retain 71% of its value, which is to say that it's lost 29% of its value. And once again, right here on the graph, that's exactly where it lines up. At 50% of the time remaining, the options price is $7.10. Notice that it's not $5 like it would be under a linear relationship. It's this time decay chart that makes traders believe the real danger begins around this area right here, right around the 30-day mark. Unfortunately, this also makes traders believe that it's this 30-day mark that matters most, and their option will not show any real signs of decay until then. Well, let's see if that's true. First of all, while this red curve is not how options are priced in the real world, it is an interesting reference point because it's also the average rate of decay. In other words, if this option's price lost 10 cents each day, it would reach zero dollars in 100 days. Let's slide this red line out so that it just touches this blue curve, and you'll see that it meets right at the 25% mark. In other words, when 25% of the time remains, the option's rate of decay will be identical, whether priced in a linear fashion or according to the square root of time. Now take a look to the left side of this 25% mark. You'll see that the options price decays slower in this region. In other words, the blue curve is relatively flatter than the reds. Think of the red and blue curves as snow ski slopes. And you can see that if you were here on the blue curve, you'd travel at a slower pace. And that's exactly what the graph shows. Your options price will decay at a slower pace, at least slower than average if they were priced under a linear pricing relationship. 
But once you cross the 25% mark, it flips. The blue curve is now relatively steeper than the red. So all options begin to show a greater slope in time decay when 25% of the time remains or when 75% of the time has passed. But time is relative. If you buy a one-year option, you'll start noticing this sharper rate of decay when 25% of the time remains or 90 days till expiration. If you started with a two-year option, your slope will become greater when 25% of the time remains or 180 days until expiration. Let's go back to our square root formula and check the numbers. If 25% of the time remains, we take the square root of 0.25 and get an answer of 1 half. And that means when 25% of the time remains, the option will have retained half of its value, or lost half. And that's exactly where we're lining up on the graph. So another way to understand this is that the first half of your option's value will decay slowly, and then it's that second half that starts to come off fairly quickly. You can also see this relationship by comparing the rate of losses relative to time. To the left of the 25% mark, notice that we need a relatively large change in time in order to get a small drop in the options price. And that would be true no matter where we measure. But to the right side, we get the opposite. We get a relatively large drop in price for small changes in time. Now, for those of you with a calculus background, if you want to get a little more technical, you'll recognize that the first derivative of a square root function at that very narrow point of 0.25 is 1. And that means that our square root pricing here in the blue curve is behaving exactly like linear pricing when 25% of the time remains. Beyond that point, in other words, closer to expiration, your option will begin decaying at a faster rate than you observed during the first 75% of its life. Now to be clear, please remember this blue curve that you're seeing here is only for the at the money option. Do not think that all options decay according to this type of a curve. That's only for the at the monies. If you're holding a deep in the money option, for example, your time decay curve is going to be almost non-existent. It might be very flat such as this down here. And that's because the only portion of an option's price that decays is the time premium or the extrinsic value. And if you have a very deep in the money option, there's not a lot of extrinsic value to begin with. So your time decay is not going to be pronounced no matter where you are relative to expiration. So again, just remember this is only applicable for the at the money options. What's the takeaway from all of this? Well, to be a better options trader, you must understand how options are priced and how their prices will be affected by all factors, including time. If this information is new to you, it shows you're going to have unpleasant surprises from any option strategy, no matter how well you think you know the strategy. You must understand options pricing if you're to profit from the way options are priced. And the Alpha Trader Certificate course teaches you the art and science of options trading.